During this hour, I'm joined by each of the three certified candidates running for state representative for Framingham's Middlesex, 6th Middlesex District. The seat opened with the passing of Representative Chris Walsh, who lost his battle with cancer on May 2nd, 2018. Today's discussions with these candidates will help you get to know them better, to know more about their values and priorities, their opinions, decisions they've made, and the things that motivate them, all of which can help you judge how you think they would make decisions and represent you if they were elected. Joining me now is candidate Mary Kate Feeney. Mary Kate, let's start off just by answering the very basic question, why are you running for state representative. Well, first off, thank you, Audrey, for having me on the show. My it pleasure. is it is an honor to be on the Audrey oh, Hall show. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm running for representative because I love Framingham. I was born and brought up here. This is where I grew up. It's where my values were uh, fostered about preserving open space, investing in education, celebrating our diversity, helping out our neighbors and working to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And it's these hometown values that I took with me to Beacon Hill when I started my service uh, with Governor Deval Patrick as an aide. And uh, working in his constituent services office, I was able to work with residents on connecting them with agencies to solve whatever problems they had, mm -hmm. whether it was about taxation or health insurance. And I also worked with advocates on the issues that were important to them and to help them you know, convey their message to the governor about legislation he should sign or propose. I love your story that you told me briefly before we started about actually being able to start there as an intern. I did. I interned actually uh, for Jane Swift, so you can age me there. <laughs> uh, and, and the reason why, I wanted to work in government. Mm -hmm. And I applied for a variety of internships, and I thought, oh, the governor's office, this will be great. And it was there, and throughout my term in working for Governor Patrick, mm -hmm. I learned about how government, you know, I majored in political science, right? Mm -hmm. But it was really working in the office where I learned about how government plays a positive role in people's lives. Mm -hmm. so, so it was through the work there. And then in the last couple of years, I've become more involved in our community. And we live in a great community. I love Framingham, as I said. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're through my work, I have been able to meet so many wonderful people and learn about how the great this community is. But I've also learned that there's a lot that we can do right. to improve. So you know, there are a lot of issues in Framingham. What yes. do you think are actually Framingham's most pressing issues? And, and what do you think you can do about them if you're elected? Right, I have four issues that I think that are important. One is about the environment and preserving open space. Mm -hmm. I believe we need to preserve open space in every corner of this community. Uh, one of the big things that Chris Walsh was working on was about rail trails. And I'm committed to pick up that baton and continue where he left off, unfortunately. And, you know, let's get the Bruce Friedman Trail going through Framingham. Uh, I was at the planning board meeting on Tuesday, and I was very encouraged to hear that the Kachichuit Rail Trail is being continued on to Natick. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. The other thing is... Um, Farm Pond. He was working on a plan with uh, Lou Colton from the planning board about making Farm Pond a productive, great part of our community and connecting it to downtown. That'll I'm, be a big challenge. I mean, we've I'm got the CSX rail lines, and, and you know that you can't do anything without CSX. Of course. And, and I'm committed to absolutely working with them and to coming to a solution that they're that doesn't stand in my way. We're going to get this done, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be there to get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is about education. We need to maintain our fair share of Chapter 70 funding and increase that funding um, and to work to make sure that our students and our teachers and our schools are getting the resources that they need to succeed. Third, what is your experience with the Framingham schools? Um, well, you know, I am a supporter of the public schools. I have many friends who have children in the school. I am not fortunate to have children. So that's, you know, I, but I go to events and I've been very active uh, learning about the Fuller Middle School project, which I think is a very important project for our community, and I'm trying to learn as much as I can so that we can, I support the project. I think we need to, that new middle school. Uh, we also need to work about the opioid epidemic and mental health stigmas. Yep. And that is, you know, I was at a council meeting and the CEO of the Metro West Medical Center was saying he doesn't have state funding for beds for this issue. We need to look at that, figure out how we get the funding there so that our local hospitals who are on the front lines can continue to fight this epidemic. And within our schools, we need to make sure that they have the resources they need so that our children aren't simply surviving, they're flourishing. 
That's been a big issue for so many years, and we've made Absolutely. quite a, me a bit of progress with Chapter 70, more over the last few years than in decades. Absolutely. Um, and so I'm what about the circuit breaker for special education? Right, well, you know, I think special education is very important. Uh, we need to continue to give resources to parents and to teachers so that our students are, th survive, are thriving. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, was working, Chris Walsh was working on a number of things about special education, about early screening and dyslexia, a resource center over at Framingham State. These are issues that we need uh, to help our parents navigate through that system. And I'm gonna wanna be there to help them get the tools that they need so that our kids, you know, can thrive. Thank you for sharing that. What about you is unique in, you know, from the other candidates? What do you feel uh, you know, puts you in a separate category from everybody else? My experience on Beacon Hill. Mm -hmm. I have, as I said, I worked for Governor Patrick. And as I said, um, it really opened my eyes to how government plays a role in people's uh, lives. And uh, I have a history of getting things done. A couple of uh, a story back in 2008 when the economic uh, crisis happened. Um, two days before Christmas, a senior citizen called me. Little, he was down, he was very down, and uh, he didn't know what to do. His hot water heater exploded, and he was 84 years old. And unfortunately, he found himself financially unable to fix it, and unable to fix it himself, like he would have done when he was younger. And so he called the office and, and asked for help. So I had to figure out, because it's the holiday season, and it's not always easy, how can we get this, this gentleman his hot water heater? So I contacted my contacts over at the Department of Housing and Economic Development, and we found a nonprofit that we could work with. And on Christmas Eve, he got a new hot water heater. How did it happen? It was through the nonprofit? It was through the nonprofit. It was connecting the agency. We found the nonprofit who they partner with, mm -hmm. and we all came together and we were able to secure them, you know, get that hot water heater in his house. Mm -hmm. So that's what, you know, I've done this before. I've helped countless people, you know, advocate and solve these problems. I've worked with advocates. I get things done. And we need someone who is on Beacon Hill, who knows the building, which I do, who can pick up where Chris left off on a variety of issues, whether it's special education or uh, environmental affairs, Alzheimer's care, and to get things done. Chris was working on a few things that had to do uh, with aging in place, mm -hmm. uh, caring for aging parents, mm -hmm. uh, dying with dignity. Uh, are you familiar with those? I am. Uh, I believe that, you know, we need to, look, my, my grandmother has Alzheimer's, I mean, sorry, dementia. And uh, it was a very difficult decision for my father and his brothers to put her uh, in assisted living and then on to a nursing home. But if we could do what we can do to keep people aging in place, to live in their homes and have the nurses to help them live out the best, you know, the end of their lives, and then I'm for it, and I'll be there to advocate for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, we talked briefly for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, you touched on the Framingham School, so just jumping back to that for a minute, I'd like to know what do you think is our largest challenge in the Framingham Schools, and, and, and um, what kind of an impact can you have on that? Well, as you know, we have three underperforming schools, and uh, each school has a wonderful set of teachers. We are very fortunate to have great teachers here in Framingham. But we need to make sure that all of those teachers and all those schools have the resources they need to solve the issue of having underperforming schools. This is why I am an advocate for um, high quality early childhood education. I think that we need this townwide, we need this commonwealth wide, so that our kids, all of our kids, have a chance to succeed and to thrive. Uh, that there is a more even playing field. Uh, we need to make sure that our kids are prepared for our schools. And you think early childhood is, is really the, the way to Absolutely. Do Studies have been showing that starting school earlier and having that leg up helps them for the long run. It's mm -hmm. about economic justice as well. Okay. In, um, in talking about economic development in Framingham, mm -hmm. what do you think is the greatest challenge we face in Framingham for economic development and what will you commit to doing to help the city, city from the State House? You know, I was uh, recently uh, walking with my dog Jack in Cushing Park. And the story of Cushing, I think, is always, it's a great Framingham story about people coming together, neighbors, state, state house, town government, to solve a problem and something that will benefit all of us. And that's how I see the role of being a state representative, is bringing people together to solve problems. Mm -hmm. I think our greatest problem here in Framingham is that we're still considered to be not friendly to, government, to businesses. I'm a small business owner. I understand 
you know, the, the uh, struggle of businesses. But as a representative, I think I will go out and work with the city council and work with the mayor and say, no, Framingham is open for business. That's what the mayor says, mm -hmm. and I believe it, but we need to talk. We just don't need to talk, but we need to walk that walk. But from the state house, I think, you could still, I think you could still be, an, but you could still be an advocate. I see myself as our voice and our advocate, mm -hmm. just in the, you know, who brings businesses together, op, um, organizations together. So from the state house, we're going to bring Jay Ash out. I know that the mayor talks to Jay Ash, but we need to bring him out, bring his team out, look at the investment opportunities here in Framingham. What about the opportunity zone? and uh, bring people together and say, What's, here's what we have in Framingham, what on the state can we get investment in? Mm -hmm. What about the Dover Amendment? Um, do you have any desire to pursue uh, legislation to change the Dover Amendment? Uh, I think the Dover Amendment is uh, complicated. It's one that I'm committed to looking into. Um, and uh, I know that we are affected by it here in Framingham, um, but uh, it is something I will look into, yes. I mean, it's it's seen as you know a really big uh, nut to crack, mm -hmm. so to speak, but something that has a huge impact on Framingham. Absolutely, um, and something that many legislators don't want to touch. Right, I'm not afraid of it. It's something that you know we are uh, we have our more than our fair share of the Dover Amendment here in Framingham, and I'm willing to look into it and see what we can do to make it productive for everyone. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with any of the efforts in the past or would you be starting with that one uh, new? Uh, I'm, a, I'm aware of some of the efforts in the past, but I, it's something that I, you know, if I'm gonna commit, excuse me, it's something that I'm really gonna have to look into. Okay, all right. Um, do you think Framingham should be either a sanctuary city or a gateway city as they are officially defined? No, I, I, I support the Secure, the, uh, Secure Communities Act uh, that Jack Lewis uh, and Senator Eldridge uh, support. Um, sanctuary cities, I, you know, it's a hot topic issue, but I don't think it's getting us what we're looking for. We are a welcoming community here in Framingham, uh, and we should continue to do that. Um, but we need to make sure that there are policies commonwealth wide uh, that do what we do here in Framingham. Mm -hmm. And the gateway city? Um, no, I don't. I don't support that. Mm -hmm. Any particular reason? Or um, I, I just, uh, you know, that would require uh, the changing of the um, education, uh, and I, I think the criteria that for, the criteria education. for mm -hmm. education, and um, you know, I, I don't, I, I, th I think we do well that we don't need the classification of a gateway city. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's your opinion? I know you made reference to it before, but what's your opinion of the number of social service facilities located in Framingham and where it's going, where we're going with that? Well, you know, I, I think the social social services do cause, do serve a purpose here in Framingham, um, and we have to find a way to work together. And because uh, you know, again, w mental health is a big issue for me, and you know. We need to work with them in our schools, in our communities, so that we can, um, so that we can, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just losing my Oh, voice. have a little sip of water. Sorry. You get a nice Access Framingham mug here to drink from. <laughs> I am so sorry about that. No problem. Um, so we need to work with our social services. Um, I, I know that a lot of people think we have too many, but we need to work with them. And because they do offer a lot for our community and for the, uh, for the most, um, vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how do you feel about state policies to uh, basically deal with the dangerous issues on highways that we have? Route 9, we have an issue with mm -hmm. people crossing. We've mm -hmm. had some people, f fatalities on Route 9. Yep. We can't seem to budge the state to help uh, make any um, egress and, uh, or, you know, uh, improvements for right. people crossing Route 9. You know, what about that? I think what's happening on the crossing of Route 9 and uh, Prospect I don't, you know, is, is terrible. I mean, how many more people have to die or have an accident at that corner? I know the city council submitted a letter asking MassDOT to look into it. As representative, I'm going to be on the phone with Stephanie Pollock every day. What's going on? What's going on? Who's the contact? Because this needs to be solved. Whether it is a bridge, we change the lights. We, they need to come out here and see it themselves. And I'm going to be, I want to be right there on the phone every day until we see action. Okay. Th there's no excuse for that. Uh, if you could ma wave a magic wand and change one thing about Framingham from the State House, 
you know, with the advantage of the state house. So it's the state house magic wand. You know, what would that be? State house magic wand. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be to increase the number of guidance counselors and social workers in our schools. I believe that is very important. Our students today are experiencing issues that you and I did not experience on the same level when we were kids. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that our schools have the resources to help our kids with those issues so that they not only succeed academically, but socially as well. Okay. Um, in terms of your involvement in politics yes. locally, um, what has been your involvement in politics? Have you worked on campaigns and what roles? And who's working on your campaign with you? Who's your, who's your team? Who's your manager <laughs> and treasurer? Uh, well, uh, I've been very involved, uh, as you know, Audrey, with the uh, city initiative. Uh, I very much believe that Framingham needed to have a more accountable, transparent, accessible, and equal government, which we have today, which I think five years from now we'll be very glad uh, we did. And so I was very involved in that. Uh, I was involved in the John Stefanini for Mayor campaign last year. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm also involved in the League of Women Voters, the Framingham Business Association, the Pheasant Hill Civic League, uh, the Sudbury Valley Trustees. What about your team? And my team uh, is made up of uh, a lot of a variety of people in here in Framingham. My campaign manager is actually a friend of mine from Deval Patrick World. Uh, and my treasurer is Dennis Cardiff, who is a longtime Framingham resident, very active here in the community. So I pride myself in that my campaign is made up of people from all parts of my life, all part of this community. Um, you know, that's, that's the way I, I see myself as an advocate and as a representative, and that's what my crew is made up of. Well, thanks so much for coming and sharing and Thank giving you. our voters the insight into who Mary Kay Feeney is and why she wants to run for state rep. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much, Audrey. For more information, go to FeeneyForFramingham.com. That's F-E-E-N-E-Y. F-O-R, Framingham.com. Stay tuned for a discussion with candidate Maria Robinson after this short break.